There's a much repeated quote about art that goes like this. Art is never finished, only abandoned. It is usually attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, although nobody who cites it ever gives a source. Others have been credited with the same sentiment. But whoever said it, if it's true, then we have to conclude that there is no such thing as a finished work of art. There is always more to do. There is always an idea or aim that hasn't yet been achieved. There is always dissatisfaction. The point when the artist says, I'm calling this done, might be very arbitrary in the end. And even then, there will be conservation, repairs, interventions of various kinds, as well as new knowledge and scholarship that might make us look again at a work of art and reassess our labels of finished or unfinished. Artists have sometimes deliberately chosen an unfinished look, and critics have used the charge of unfinished to condemn art and artists they didn't care for. This was a charge laid against Impressionism in the 1870s. Sometimes works of art are abandoned because a commission is terminated by an unhappy artist or dissatisfied client, or because time runs out for the artist. Illness or death intervenes. The work is forever unfinished. The readable signs of being unfinished are clearer in some works of art than in others. Uncut stone in a sculpture, or sketches on a canvas never worked up in paint. And such unfinished works can have great value in revealing the artist's technique and the details of their process. Yet the appeal of unfinished works of art is deeper than these technical aspects. It is because they pose questions to which there are no definite answers. They are open-ended and provoke new ways of thinking about art and artists. Not least, they are enigmatic. They offer mystery. This unfinished painting of a young woman is a mystery. It is in the collection of the National Gallery in London. The artist and sitter are both unknown. So is the date, although the style of the work and the clothes of the figure indicate a date around 1800. The geographical origin of the painting is also not known, but it was bought for the National Gallery in Florence and has been described as Italian or French. It's a medium-sized painting, just under a metre in height, with a simple composition, a single female figure, three-quarter length, placed in the middle of the canvas, with her left side towards us, so that her body is in profile. Her head is turned, so that she faces outwards, and meets the viewer's gaze with a cool and measured gaze of her own. Her dark eyes sparkle, her face is slightly flushed, and her fashionably short hair is untidy and windblown, giving her a sense of animation. Her face is a characterful one. This is surely a portrait of a particular individual. She is very youthful, perhaps in her late teens. Her long white cotton dress with high waist and short sleeves, embellished with a red sash, all date her to the Romantic era of the first years of the 19th century. She also wears a shawl wound round her lower back and caught up in her left hand. But where is her left hand and her left arm? There is an Italianate landscape behind her and blue Italian skies over her. But what is in front of her? What kind of landscape is that? These are areas left exposed by the uncompleted painting of the portrait revealing canvas covered by a thin brown wash that has been scraped back, and insubstantial broken outlines of something. The portrait was fairly well advanced when, for some reason we do not know, it was abandoned, leaving areas unpainted and others only thinly or sketchily completed. Revealed in fragmentary glimpses is the picture that lies beneath the portrait, 
the canvas was not new. It had previously been used for the early stages of a nude study of a seated male figure, perhaps a life school exercise. The canvas was reused for the portrait and turned 90 degrees so that the nude figure is now sideways. In places, the outlines of the figure are clearly visible. Elsewhere, notably the fragment of the man's face on the right, the dark lines show only faintly through the overpainting. The painting is attractive for itself as well as for its palimpsest character. The modelling of the figure is awkward in some respects, although in other ways, the painting of the face, the fall of fabric, it is an accomplished piece of work. Perhaps it was painted by a young artist, still or recently a student, hence the academic life study underneath the portrait. So what is the story of this layered and incomplete work of art? The National Gallery bought the picture for £160 in 1908 from a dealer who had acquired it in Florence. It was described as a portrait of Napoleon Bonaparte's sister, Elisa Bonaparte, Duchess of Tuscany and Princess of Lucca and Piombino, by the neoclassical French painter Jacques-Louis David. At this time, the National Gallery possessed no works by David. Even today, it has only two, both purchased in the late 20th century, and was weak generally on French paintings, so we can assume that it was keen to acquire this one, and perhaps did not look at it too closely. Because the woman in the picture looks nothing like Elisa Bonaparte, even allowing for the difference in age between a portrait from around 1800 and depictions from five or six years later. Elisa's features were well known, not least to David, who painted a portrait of her in his great canvas of The Coronation of Napoleon, begun in 1805. And there is little basis for the attribution to David, beyond wishful thinking. Even at the time of the acquisition, doubts were expressed over this. The Burlington Magazine's reviewer was clearly unconvinced, noting the painting's deliberate rejection of movement, variety and emotion, and its insensitiveness to the finer gradations of form, and suggesting that the portrait had been abandoned as unsuccessful because of inadequacies in the heavy contour of the cheek, the modelling of the face, and the treatment of the hair. At some point, the National Gallery dropped the attribution to David, and the painting is now described as being by an unknown Italian artist. The catalogue entry states that the hills in the background suggest that it may have been painted in Italy, although the landscape is so conventionalised that no connection with Italy would have been necessary for whoever painted it. In the coolness of the colours and the posture of the figure, and the romantic panache which infuses and animates its neoclassical balance, the portrait has the look of a French painting, perhaps by a student or follower of Ingres, influenced by his famous portrait of Caroline Riviere. But it is a very visually appealing painting, and its unfinished state gives it a feeling of mystery, of open-ended possibility. It is its very incompleteness that ensures that this painting will keep its secrets.